So you see, I, uh, I have this situation where I have a path uh, beginning at, uh, uh, so this is a path which is given by a continuous function gamma from the closed interval AB on the real line to uh, complex plane and uh, of course this point is Z0 which is gamma of A and uh, this terminal point of the path is Z1 which is gamma of B and uh, what we defined as a uh, an indirect analytic continuation uh, in terms of power series is an expression uh, it is a uh, it is an expression involving uh, power series which continuously vary with respect to the parameter t as t varies on the uh, on this closed interval on the real line ok. So, uh, for every uh, t in a b uh, we have gamma uh, we have we have the function f t of z which is given by this power series it is a convergent power series uh, centered at gamma of t. Uh, so, it is an expansion in integral powers of z minus gamma of t and with coefficients a n which are again functions of t uh, n is greater than equal to 0 and uh, of course, uh, with uh, radius of convergence uh, r of t and uh, disk of convergence uh, mod z minus gamma t is less than r of t. So, this is a so this is a one parameter family of power series ok the parameter is t all right and we want this we want the as t moves uh, which means you are thinking of the point gamma of t moving on this path. So, t is moving on this interval ok from a to b gamma of t traces this path ok and we want the power series to move uh, to be be continuous in the sense that uh, we want successively uh, the uh, power series in a neighborhood uh, being direct analytic continuations. Uh, uh, and then that is a condition. So, the condition is uh, for uh, t uh, t prime near t uh, f t prime uh, is equal to f t this is the condition we have ok. So, so in other words uh, so, so, so for each each uh, t in a b there exists an epsilon uh, there exists an epsilon of t uh, greater than 0 such that uh, uh, f t prime is e the same as f t uh, whenever t prime is in this epsilon neighborhood of t. So, t prime belongs to uh, uh, t minus epsilon t t plus epsilon t intersection of course, a b this is the condition this is the condition that we put to say that uh, 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 so if you have comma t here uh, corresponding to a point t. So, if I draw if I draw the real line uh, here and this is a and this is b and I have a t then I have a an open neighborhood an open interval centered at uh, t uh, given by t minus epsilon t t plus epsilon t such that for every t prime in that neighborhood uh, the uh, the power series at t prime and the power series at t represent the same analytic function ok. So, uh, uh, of course, when I say the power series are equal I mean that the analytic functions they represent are equal in the in the uh, of course, in the intersection of the uh, uh, 
it will be in it will be in a neighborhood of uh, it will be in this neighborhood ok. So, so what is happening is here is gamma of t and then I have gamma of t prime and you know there is a gamma of t uh, has it is a power series with certain radius of convergence and uh, what I want is that uh, uh, if I draw if I draw the power series uh, centered at gamma t prime what I want is that in this uh, in this intersection uh, I want uh, uh, the the power series at gamma t and gamma t prime to represent the same analytic function that is what I want ok. So, uh, so, so at gamma t this is the uh, this is the disc of convergence with radius equal to uh, r uh, radius of convergence equal to r t and at gamma t prime I have another disc of convergence uh, with uh, radius of convergence r t prime ok and then I in this disc of convergence I have f t uh, which is a analytic function of z with this power series expansion it is the Taylor series expansion of f t and <coughs> here I have in this disc I have the uh, pow the power series f t prime ok and what I want is that in this intersection of these two discs I want f t and f t prime to be the same alright. So, what this essentially means and I want this to happen for all t prime in uh, yeah, all t prime sufficiently close to t. So, in other words uh, if you take any such uh, t prime uh, then uh, what is happening is that uh, f t prime and f t are direct analytic continuations of each other in fact they are one in the same function on the intersection. So, they are direct analytic continuations of each other. So, uh, thus thus for t prime close to close to t uh, f t prime uh, comma so if I take the pair which cor corresponds to uh, uh, the disc of convergence for f t prime uh, I mean for f t and for f t prime they these two pairs are direct anal analytic continuations of one another. So, uh, so, so if I take mod z minus gamma t less than r t this is the domain the disc of convergence of f t and uh, the the other one is z minus gamma t prime lesser than r t prime f sub t prime are direct analytic continuations continuations of one another. So, this is what I have and the claim is that this uh, this definition uh, uh, so the claim is that this definition of uh, thinking of uh, a one parameter family of power series ok uh, such that close by power series are the same uh, that means uh, they represent the same analytic function uh, this is I claim this gives a an equivalent definition of uh, an indirect analytic continuation. So, the claim is uh, that uh, uh, the power series the power series uh, at B is the is an indirect analytic continuation of the power series at A. So, so the claim is claim is that the the the, the power series uh, claim is mod z minus gamma b uh, gamma a uh, or rather gamma b uh, lesser than r of b uh, which is uh, b is gamma uh, b is just a z 1. So, this is, this is z 1 comma the power series at b uh, which is gamma of uh, 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 which is a power series at gamma b which is a power series at this point z 1 uh, is uh, uh, an indirect analytic continuation analytic continuation ok 
continuation of the initial uh, the initial pair this is the final pair this is the final pair of the initial pair uh, which is at the starting point gamma a is uh, z naught So this is the uh, this is the claim, and to prove this claim, I'll have to show that you know our definition of indirect analytic continuation, the original definition of indirect analytic continuation, is that there are finitely many, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, direct. It's a chain of finitely many direct analytic continuations. That's our definition of indirect analytic continuation. That's what I'll have to. Prove. So what I'll have to show is that this is obtained from this by a chain of direct analytic continuations. Now, uh, see, uh, uh, this is what we have to prove. It's uh, more or less intuitively ob obvious, but then it needs a proof, okay? Because it uses some topology. So, uh, so the so the point is that while the definition insists that nearby uh, nearby power series uh, are equal, okay, which means that you're saying as t varies a, uh, in a small neighborhood. Uh, you are getting the same function okay it is clear that nearby power the, the functions that you get nearby are one and the same so they are direct analytic continuations but if uh, but it does not it does not imply that uh, this and the starting one the, the, the power series at the starting point the power series at the ending point the analytic functions that they represent are uh, indirect analytic continuations of each other that is not implied okay. The, the the definition only says nearby uh, uh, power series. Uh, uh, if you take two nearby points, uh, then the corresponding power series are direct analytic continuations. Okay, but it doesn't tell you uh, uh, that, for example, uh, anything is an indirect analytic continuation of something before it. Okay, so uh, that is the power series at any point is an indirect analytic continuation of a power series at a point before okay that needs to be proved so uh, so how does one prove this well one essentially uses uh, uh, some topology so the first thing is what you do is uh, start with start with uh, t not equal to a let epsilon not uh, epsilon not be uh, say the maximum uh, uh, such that uh, f t prime is equal to f t naught for all t prime in uh, uh, t naught equal to a to t naught plus epsilon okay epsilon naught right. So, choose uh, uh, you choose a maximum epsilon naught see the definition says that you give me any point then there is a then there is a small neighborhood uh, uh, of the parameter corresponding to that point where the power series are all equal all right so i start with t equal to t naught then i'll get an epsilon neighborhood of that t equal to t naught where all the power series are equal okay then what i do is so you know in this way uh, so my uh, inductively i do the following thing so i have this is a this is b on the real line Okay, and well, and uh, a is t naught, and what I do is now I have now I have a uh, I have this uh, epsilon naught uh, plus t naught, and for all t in this uh, interval, for all t prime in this interval, f t is equal to f t prime. I have that. Okay. Now what I'll do is I'll start with epsilon plus t naught. I'll call that as a, I'll call that as t one. If you call that as T1, uh, then there exists an epsilon 1 uh, maximum such that uh, 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 
f t f t uh, t 1 is equal to uh, f t prime is equal to f t 1 for all t prime in uh, uh, well this epsilon 1 neighborhood about t 1 all right. So, uh, t 1 t 1 minus epsilon 1 t 1 plus epsilon 1 intersection a b ok. This is again just this condition uh, that the locally the power series uh, sub for sufficiently closed values of the parameter are the same I am just applying that condition here ok. And of course, uh, I s if if you know uh, uh, if this interval already contains a b I am done okay if if uh, if the interval a comma t naught plus uh, uh, a comma a plus epsilon epsilon naught contains if it contains a b uh, we are done because in that case you are saying that you are just saying that the uh, you are just saying that the power series at b is the same as the power series at a all right. Uh, and uh, uh, I mean uh, what you are saying is that uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, not the power series but the function represented by the power series at b namely f b is the same as the function representing the power series at a all right that is what you are saying and we are done and which means that uh, uh, the this function is actually the same as this function and there is a whole neighborhood uh, there is a whole open set which contains this whole arc where uh, the, the f a and f b define the same function ok. So, it, it means that this is actually an extension it is a direct extension of uh, f b is a direct analytic extension of f a ok. And of course, this a direct analytic extension is also an indirect analytic extension ok. It is a chain consisting of just one pair uh, I mean just a uh, couple of pairs ok. So, uh, so, if we stop here, but if it is not ok, we continue ok. So, what, what we do is if, if not, if not we do the following thing, we put t 1 is this and then you again uh, try to look for a neighborhood surrounding, so surrounding t 1 where uh, f t 1 where f t prime is the analytic function represented by f t prime is the same as the analytic function represented by f t 1 ok. And uh, uh, clearly um, f t 1 uh, f t 1 is a direct analytic continuation continuation of f t naught which is f a this is because is because for t prime close to t 1 and t prime lesser than t 1 we have uh, f t prime is equal to f t 1 and f t prime is also equal to f t naught ok. Because if t prime is equal to f t naught the moment t prime goes lesser than t 1 all right that is how t naught uh, that is how epsilon naught was chosen that is how t 1 was chosen all right. So, you have both uh, which implies that uh, uh, f t 1 is equal to f t naught ok. So, uh, so in this way what has happened is that uh, you know I have I have I have I have this point I have cho I have chosen this point t 1 such that f t 1 is uh, direct analytic continuation of f t naught ok. And uh, and you know I now I continue this process I now continue this process until I reach the other uh, the other end point uh, until I re until the my parameter t reaches b alright. So, you will have to show that the parameter t uh, if I do this process 
I have to show that I have to hit B at some point. Now again if uh, well uh, this this interval uh, uh, B is less than or equal to if B is strictly less than uh, T1 plus epsilon 1 is equal to T2 we are done okay we will be done uh, and if not and if not we set uh, 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 we set T2 is equal to T1 plus epsilon 1 and choose epsilon 2 maximum so that uh, F T prime is equal to F T 2 uh, for all T prime in uh, T 2 minus epsilon 2 T 2 plus epsilon 2 intersection A B okay. So you so you continue this process we continue by induction by induction getting an infinite chain uh, chain of uh, direct successive direct analytic continuations continuations so what you get is well i have first uh, uh, i won't write the domains so i have f t not which is fa and then uh, f t1 f t2 and so on and the point is that uh, and this corresponds to choosing points on the on the on the parameterizing interval so this is t0 then i get t1 then i get t2 and it goes on like this okay and every ftj is a direct analytic continuation of ftj minus 1 okay and i i go on like this now the the point i want to say is that uh, my my claim is that these t's okay there are two possibilities to this sequence of t's one is i i might uh, the sequence of t's could would could just stop okay if the sequence of t's uh, stops at a finite stage then i am done okay because then i would have then this would be a finite chain of direct analytic continuation starting from fa and ending at fb which will tell you that fb is an indirect analytic continuation of fa okay see the only problem is that i need a finite chain for in, for fb to show that fb is an indirect analytic continuation of fa i need only a, the only thing is i need is a is a finite chain okay it is a finiteness that is bothering me all right so if if the sequence uh, t u t not t1 uh, stops at a finite stage finite stage we are done we are done because you have got a you have got a finite chain of successive direct analytic continuations it starts with fa and ends with fb and that will tell you that fb is an indirect analytic continuation of fa okay so this case can be ruled out okay this this case is done okay what is the other case the other case is that the sequence is an infinite sequence okay and if it is an infinite sequence there are two possibilities okay it is an infinite sequence which is a which is an increasing sequence okay so it has to it is bounded about by the monotone convergence it has to converge okay so if it so there are again two possibilities if it converges to b also I am done okay the only problematic situation is when it converges to a point before b and in that case you get an uh, that case will not happen because you will get a contradiction okay so uh, uh, if not the sequence uh, t i t n n greater than to 0 is infinite and uh, and it certainly converges and it certainly converges to uh, say uh, t infinity uh, 
uh, in AB okay. So, uh, so you are having a so I am using the monotone convergence theorem here I have a sequence of uh, real numbers which is bounded above and which is increasing then it has to converge okay and the conver uh, whatever the limit is I am calling that limit as t infinity and it has to rem it has to belong to this interval closed interval AB because it is closed a closed set will always contain the limits of its sequences okay. So this t infinity is in AB and if this t infinity is B then I am done okay we claim we claim t infinity is equal to B okay we claim t infinity is is the point B all right if not if not uh, uh, then t infinity is a point strictly less than B okay and uh, uh, th that will give us a contradiction because you know see the situation is that uh, uh, so you have A which is T0 then you have T1 and so on suppose it converges to T infinity and this T infinity is strictly less than B uh, we will give a contradiction as follows what will happen is well uh, you see the, the condition the this condition that the power series f t you know uh, it locally uh, should match with the power series in nearby points also applies at t infinity okay. So uh, uh, at at uh, by 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 the definition uh, there exists epsilon uh, of t infinity uh, greater than 0 such that uh, f t prime is equal to f t infinity for all t prime in uh, an epsilon t infinity neighborhood of t infinity. So it is so I should write this t infinity minus epsilon t infinity uh, t infinity plus epsilon t infinity uh, intersect a b I will get this okay and now this will give me a contradiction because you see uh, if you choose a if you choose a uh, uh, so you know I, I get this neighborhood uh, like this and this left hand point is t infinity minus epsilon of t infinity the right hand point is t infinity plus epsilon of t infinity of course I am not worried about uh, the right hand point it could go uh, beyond B also okay. So I am not worried about that but I am but what is important for me is the points before t infinity. So if you if you choose a point if you choose a point t prime there then you will be in trouble uh, choose choosing a point for m sufficiently large because after all uh, uh, every neighborhood of the uh, limit point contains points uh, as close as you want uh, of the sequence. So I can find a TM there alright and then uh, but what is the contradiction the contradiction is uh, we have that F T prime is equal to F uh, TM for all T prime in uh, uh, T m minus epsilon m t m plus epsilon m intersection a b I mean this is how you are choosing see what you should understand is that this t m plus epsilon m which is mind you this is uh, t this is t m plus 1 this t m plus epsilon m is t m plus 1 all right and this t m plus 1 is to the left of t infinity Okay, this Tm plus 1 is to the left of T infinity. So I have this, uh, so I have T infinity here. I have on this on this side I have T infinity minus epsilon of T infinity. Okay, and I have uh, and on the other hand I have chosen Tm here. Okay, I have chosen Tm here, and then I have uh, uh, then there is a uh, there is a neighborhood. Right, uh, t 
Tm minus epsilon m Tm plus epsilon m alright and uh, Tm plus epsilon m is, uh, is, is to the left of T infinity okay. So this is Tm plus 1 this is Tm minus plus epsilon m which is Tm plus 1 right but the point is I get a contradiction here okay. I will get a contradiction here in the sense that uh, if I take any point here at a point here uh, for a t there if I call this is this t as t prime I will have that f t prime is equal to f t m okay I will have that and on the, on the other hand I will also have f t prime is also equal to f uh, t infinity okay and that means that you know uh, 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 so it means that uh, this t infinity has to be strictly less than epsilon uh, the distance of t infinity from tm has to be strictly less than epsilon m which is not correct okay. So, so this implies uh, distance of t infinity from tm should be lesser than epsilon m which is which is which is not correct. this is what you get see please try to understand I have this uh, left side of the neighborhood of t infinity with length epsilon of t infinity such that for every t prime there the power series at f t prime is the same as the power series at f t infinity all right. In that neighborhood I choose for m sufficiently large a t m okay and for that t m I have an epsilon m which is a maximum uh, 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 interval around Tm such that Ft prime is equal to Ftm alright but I have found a point outside uh, that interval okay uh, uh, so you know I have so you know I have I have points uh, I have this point T infinity which is outside that interval and such that uh, 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 yeah the, the, the analytic function representing, representing Ft infinity is the same as analytic function re representing f t m that is a contradiction to the definition of epsilon m okay and that contradiction tells me that uh, this case will not happen okay. So uh, uh, thus uh, thus we end up with uh, uh, thus t infinity is actually equal to b so, uh, so I will just have to say that uh, uh, now since I know that t infinity is b. Uh, then I use the compactness of the arc to get you know finitely many points uh, in the sequence uh, with the corresponding disks of convergence you know covering the uh, covering the arc all right and then it will follow that uh, f b is uh, an analytic continuation of f a right. So uh, now the disks the disks of convergence uh, mod z minus gamma t i less than r t i uh, i greater i greater than or equal to zero uh, uh, cover uh, the arc traced by gamma gamma uh, which is compact which is compact and uh, uh, thus uh, finitely uh, many of these disks also also cover uh, they also cover gamma this uh, and uh, uh, so this shows then uh, fb uh, becomes an uh, indirect analytic continuation analytic continuation of
So let's stop here.